Anyway, where we go? Ah, we're climbing nicely. Hey, Nori. Jacqueline. Hi, we're in. Hi, Brian. It's nice to see so many of you want to come and watch me make an absolute fool of myself by making predictions for 2023. But get your notepads out, kids. Get ready to take notes. And we'll tick them off as the year goes through and see which ones come through. Okay. Should be funny. A happy hog when eight years old, but we'll get to that at the end. Yeah. Hi, Dylan. Right, so, as you know, we're at the truck. We're at home in our office. So I've been off Lancashire. It's overcast, showery, three degrees, pretty chilly. So David's got a big car day on. Anyway, we're here to make predictions for 2023. So here we go. And if any if any is wanting to stick a question in that you want me to predict an answer, <laughs> predict something will happen because I I try to keep this quite tight. I don't want to take up a lot of a lot of your times today. And I'm time today, obviously. You're busy people. And it's a you know. So predictions for twenty twenty three. The economy and finances will start on A. Right. Economic decline to accelerate. And the recession to deepen. Don't think anybody has to be a rocket scientist to guess that. Right? Interest rates to get as high as 7% by autumn next year. Because they're not going to be able to get a grip on inflation for several reasons. So, inflation, they've managed to get it down to about 7.5 to 8%. Food. Um, price inflation is going to be a massive driver in that next year. For reasons we'll come on to. All right. And a massive drop in living standards, folks. Inflation means that my money's not gone as far as what it used to. It means we won't be able to afford what we used to be able to afford. People are struggling right now to feed their families and keep the house warm. I'm afraid that's going to get worse. As we know, 500 smackers will be putting your gas and electricity come April. But that reviews every three months. Don't expect it to stop there, even though they say they're going to put a freeze on it. Don't expect it to stop there. The power companies will find a way of keeping the unit price the same. But charging his mare anyway. You can bet your boots on that. Right. Poverty related illnesses to add to um, a other pressures on the NHS. Malnutrition. And I'm caught as back in London already and things like that. Scarlet fever starting to run a savvy. All these things that can be fought off with good nutrition and healthy living. Gives you a strong um, immune system. If you're not living that well. So, over the way the illnesses will put a lot of pressure on the NHS. We've got a wee bit more as we follow down. Um, Tories to dig in, to uh, dig in on public sector pain and continue to use um, the A. Uh, the pay bodies that are doing there, the set, the pay increases as shields. Right? Trade union strikes will intensify. There'll be a lot of disruption. The government and the press will try and turn the public against the people who are fighting for decent livings. We'll even mirror that as we get along. All right. Once it's passed, I expect the Tories to use the Public Order Act to break up strikes and picket lines. Employers like the Royal Mail and BT to do what P and O ferries did: sack their whole workforces for cheaper agency staff. And remember, there'll be a lot of desperate people out there as, as the recession deepens. And the economic decline accelerates because there'll be a lot of people on the brew. 
a lot of people desperate to keep a roof over their head by you know, find their rent and mortgage. So they're there paying old ferry. They're sacked the bloody lot of them and hire back in cheaper contracts or hey, even break strikes by hiring agency staff. Have the police use the Public Order Act to move on the picket line to allow the scab workers to get in. From the scab workers' point of view, they're desperate for money. The term scab is an old one. Kids these days won't even have heard of it. It's just agency worker. And there'll be an awful lot of desperate people out here looking for agency work. You know, I've used agencies all my life because it suited me. It meant I could work when I wanted to. Generally, the most stable times in my life were when I was actually full-time uh, employment for somebody else. But hey, I've always liked to suit myself. Right. Um, and that will lead to a potential for civil unrest, as it did with the miners. You'll have a picket lines challenging the cops that have decided to use a public order act to, to shift them on so the agency workers can get in. Now, food and medicine shortages to intensify for reasons I've already stated in my daily broadcast. The UK had no food security. Food security is even worse now. We're in a better position here in Scotland, but as I said, he's through the internal market built and a, that a um, procurement body that's going to take control of where food can be bought or shipped or taken. Um, let's see the medicine shortages. Well, most of the suppliers in Europe's a bigger market. There's diseases rampant earlier and all, um, which have also leading to uh, certain uh, medicine shortages. But, bigger market. And of course, we'll be buying less drugs because um, where there is shortages, the drugs companies has been reported. You can just look that stuff up, or gouge in the NHS. Prices, things like paracetamol and other things are going through the roof. But they're contracted to buy them for these uh, companies. And uh, what's going to be interesting is, um, uh, especially in the devolved uh, um, areas, uh, buying of these things is done through Public Health England. When we were in Europe, we bought drugs through the European Medical Agency, cheaper to buy in bulk. Out of Europe, we're still smaller market. Get the four nations together. <coughs> it's a bigger, bigger pie. You know, you can make more demands. How the drugs will be distributed through the UK will all be interested. Interesting. All right. Um, UK government to justify a um, a outsourcing health because that's how it will be, ter it'll be termed outsourcing. To lessen pressures on the NHS, but it's just a way of creepingly privatising the NHS. It's a bit like the um, the amount of agency staff they're using in the NHS. NHS England paid out three billion quid last year. You could have trained a lot of nurses for that. <laughs> so you could have. That's just privately outsourcing folks, as they say. You know. <coughs> so the NHS is being privatised by back door. <coughs> that will take money out of your health service um, because of the family consequences. And hey, we will have to go down the same road. Unless, of course, we break free as a union. Um, in Scotland, support for independence to rise. I should be smiling while saying that, but it's going to be deprivation and poverty that drives that rise. It's 
going to be the the bitterness at living in a land energy rich, watching your business go down the tubes because you can't afford your energy bills. That sort of thing. But the idea that these people are going to lose their businesses, they already lost their biggest market, Europe. Um, breaks my heart. But it's going to drive them to your side of the fence. Right, um, posters to be told by UK government to stop polling on the issue of independence because it's going to get embarrassing for Westminster every time a poll hits the papers as support rises and rises and rises. Project Fear to Intensify. I mean, that one, that one in there. The only rag they expressed the other day, Scotland to lose its army. Wow. That's as bad as nobody able to defend herself in UFOs, according to Mr. Darling. Oh, wonderful. Um, Union Jack boots to um, trample on devolution via the internal market bill. And that will also lead to greater support for India. Because the evolution is very popular on Scotland. 86% of the people like the fact that there's a Scottish Parliament and want to keep it. You start trampling on what that Parliament can do, then those who were sitting on the line because they thought, well, we'll put the evolution that day, they're going to move. So, <laughs> stupid is as stupid does. The First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, to be demonised in the press. Like that article in the way um, Rag the Express, this is a propaganda thing. What they try to do is demonise the person. You know, you lose this because of her. You lose that because of her. You lose that, that because of her. You lose this because of her. That's how it works. Sturgeon's this, well this. Sturgeon's that all that. It's actually SNP policy and voted for by the public, so it's the public will. But the First Minister will be demonised. Um, but we see some in the independence movement doing that now, the, 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 the opposition, so they've got a wee bit of in that. You know, I've been critical, critical of them myself. But some of them out there take it, they take it to extremes. Um, Scotland's public services to be run down in the press will intensify. They're going to be telling the crap at everything. They're going to try and reintroduce the cringe. That's what devolution did away with. Devolution gave the people confidence that we could do things differently. So we could make our own lives better. And we have. To quote Lord George Folks, we pushy pants on the Pravda. Um, the SNP are deliberately making public services manifestly better in Scotland than which they in what they are in our UK. BBC presenter. And is that a bad thing? Lord Folks. No, but they'll be in the deliberately. Mental. So, devolution has been a great thing. It really has. But they're going to strip all the powers of the Parliament like the Teltas in 2014 after we lost they were going to do. They can't ban it, us. They can't get rid of us that way, but they won't try and shut us up. And they'll try and strip our Parliament into being nothing but a talking shop. Scotland's economy will fare better because of the things that we have that England needs. But the people are not going to prosper from it. In fact, nobody in these islands is going to prosper for anything. There'll be the mismanagement doing that road. Democracy and good management are the reason for independence. In an independent Scotland, in your democracy, you'll get who you vote for. In the UK, we get who England votes for. 
we get what we can be dictated to us. The evolution has taught us that we can do better when we are off the leash on any issue. Any issue. Look at all our public services. Look at our financial sector flourishing. The building sector was flourishing until Brexit. World famous food and drink industry. Vast renewable resources. Oil and gas. Because most certainly they bear. We all that in our control. We can probably help England with all that in our control. Because in our control, we'll use it for the betterment of the people. And their control. The Tory elite and the royal family are stealing it. All the money ends up in the private sector. Nothing ends up in the public purse, really. Big corporations don't pay tax. It's only two, two blogs that runs a medium-sized business there. Fairly-sized business that pays tax. Yeah. The Tory elite and the royal family, they don't pay fucking tax. Well, their money's all stuffed in the Cayman Isles or in assets. So, we're proving, proving through devolution that we do things better when, when they're in our control. So that's my predictions, folks. I'll do your penny of paper there. And we'll see how many of them come through. Huh? Anyway, it's time to start cheering up a wee bit. It's Hogman Eve. And here in Scotland, we like a good party. Anyway, it wasn't a great prospectus, was it? <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, it's not the worst I've seen. <laughs> Some of the predictions for next year are absolutely dire. I thought I was being gentle. So, that's my predictions. Uh, doesn't it sound great? <laughs> but hey, I'm just going to end on a happy note. <laughs> and wishes all a, a happy new year. All right. Now enjoy the rest of Hogmanay. Enjoy the party tonight. Day half of Mora. Day half of the second to sober up. Back to well on the third. Now there won't be a broadcast until Thursday next week because I'm a otherwise occupied on Wednesday. So. Anyway, we're all shut down until we're all shut down until Wednesday. I'll do a review show, so I'll review Wednesday and Thursday. Okay. Now, as I say, say and I wish you a very happy new year. And we'll see some of you later in the MD2 Cafe pub. Look after yourselves. Bye now.